Hello and welcome to this edition of DE Cast. My name is Rob Bagby, a developer evangelist for Microsoft Corporation, and this is part two of a screencast I'm, I'm doing illustrating how PHP developers can integrate Silverlight components into their PHP applications. In part one, I, uh, I, I showed you kind of the integration between PHP and, uh, and Silverlight, uh, albeit in a very lame application. I built a Silverlight component that just had a hard-coded, uh, this, this demo is lame in it, uh, and served it out to a PHP page. This line of code uh, served to prove that PHP was running, and this showed you that the uh, Silverlight component was integrated onto that PHP page. We want to take that a, a step further into, into this demo. Uh, now, keep in mind that Silverlight components run completely on the browser. And so they don't follow like a typical postback model. When you need server uh, data from the server, you don't uh, issue a full request to the server and, and post the whole page down and then and then get a, a response a response a complete response stream with the entire page. The Silverlight component issues an out of band HTTP request to a service uh, hosted on a web server, gets its data back, and then acts upon that data in in some sort of manner. So what we want to do here in this demo, or what I want to do, is to build a web service uh, in PHP and consume that service from my Silverlight component. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is work with my, uh, my PHP uh, application. And I'm just going to add in a couple, uh, couple files I've already built to kind of speed things along. So I've got these files I've built. I'm going to show them all to you in a second here. Let me just paste them into my PHP app. Go over here and let me just uh, refresh. And I'll just include these into the project. So I'm going to include those in the project. now. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here, but I want to show you what I've got. I've got a little simple wine class. It's got some wine type uh, uh, properties in it, like a wine name, label, URL, bottle price, etc. So I want to work with a collection of these wines eventually. I've got another little class here that illustrates another integration opportunity between, uh, between uh, PHP and Microsoft, which is uh, using the Microsoft SQL Server driver. I've got a little function here called getWinePage that takes in the page size and the page number, so you can return maybe uh, wines 5 through 10 out of 1,000, and we'll return that output parameter of the total number of wines in the database. So here what we're doing is we're just calling SQL Serve Connect to connect to our SQL Server database. And then down here you can see I've created our, a little, uh, I'm calling into a, a stored procedure called spgetWinePage that takes in those three parameters, the page size, page number, and the output parameter for the total number of rows. Uh, I call SQL Server Query. And then I call this interesting function called SQL Serve Fetch Object. And what this allows me to do is to take that response stream from SQL Server and deserialize it into an array of my wine types. So that little wine class you saw me uh, you saw earlier, I can deserialize my response stream into this class. Now I just need to make sure that these property names match up with the uh, with the uh, re uh, column names that I'm returning from my uh, from my stored procedure. So then all I do is return this array of wines as well as the output param telling me the total number of wines. I've got another screencast illustrating uh, SQL Server integration uh, in more detail. So if you want more on that, look uh, look under my screencast. Um, with that, I've also built out this little service. So this is my RESTful service that exposes uh, really that functionality over HTTP uh, via an HTTP GET. And so what you can see here is uh, I take in two parameters, or I support two parameters, page size and uh, index, that you can pass in uh, as query string parameters in your HTTP GET. If you don't pass them to me, I default the page size to 5 and the current page to 1. Now here I just call that little uh, function get wine page, passing it the page size, the current page, and here's my output parameter. Once I get that response back, which is just that array of wines, I just use this very simple function, JSON encode, to JSON encode that response. And so I'm essentially sending out a JSON response stream. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on wine service and set that as my start page. And let's just remember my uh, page size is one of my parameters. I'm going to run this thing up. And we can see that it's going to have a initially, here's my response stream, and I can go ahead and uh, maybe set the page size to 1 so we can kind of prove that we can control that. And you can see we just got one, one wine back. So we've really quickly built a PHP RESTful service. Let's consume that service from a Silverlight component. So what I'm going to do is I've got a Silverlight component I've already written, and I'm just going to copy this thing into my... Uh, 
Let's see, where's that component? Right here. I'm going to copy this. It's got some image files and then some uh, some uh, uh, some uh, Silverlight code I want. I'm going to go ahead and copy in everything. Uh, over copy over some images I already had in there. Um, the first thing I want to show you, I did in, inside of my app.saml, I've got a bunch of styles that I've added in. And these styles are very similar to styles that you see in, in, in other technologies like CSS. They allow you to externalize the styling from, uh, from, your, uh, from your actual markup. Um, I also need to add a using statement using SL controls. And that's just going to bring in a, a namespace for one of the controls I added in. So that's my app.xaml. The real crux of my functionality is in this page called cohowines.xaml. And uh, you can see that right now Visual Studio is telling me, hey, you got some problems inside of your code. Um, you are, uh, let's see what, uh, let's see what the error actually is. Oh, that was just a designer error. Everything's working out just fine here. Um, I thought I might needed some references. Uh, there are a couple of references you need to in order to deserialize JSON. One of them is system.runtime.serialization and system.servicemodel.web. But I think I've already added those in. So here's my page. It's really a very quite simple page. Um, I've just got a grid that's got a couple rows to find. And then uh, I've got some columns to find underneath that. So I've got a three column grid. And uh, in the very top in uh, my first row, I've got a nice little border out here that just says wine search. And then I've got a stack panel that allows me to enter in uh, the page number and the number of wines that I want. And then I've got a little button that I can click. It says fetch and it's wired up to an event handler button click. What I want to do is when I click this button, I want to go call my service and then bind the results to this wine list box. And this list box is just a, a list box in Silverlight. But we've used some of the Silverlight uh, goodies to build out a nice little template to make this thing look a lot better than just a pure text uh, list box. So one other thing I need to do here is in my app.xaml, I need to tell it, hey, go ahead and run my main page.xaml, or excuse me, my coho wines.xaml, and not my main page. And so that'll uh, fire up the appropriate uh, control. Now, let's take a look at the code for that event handler in my coho wines. So when somebody clicks that button click, Here's the code that's going to run right here. First thing we do is we go fetch the URI to our service. What is the URI? It's that URI to that PHP, uh, to that PHP service we created. Here's wineservice.php. Here are the parameters, index, and page size. And all we're doing in this method, compose URI, is just taking those two values from the text boxes and adding them into that URI template at the appropriate place. Next thing we do is we uh, create a web client, which is a networking type in Silverlight that allows you to issue HTTP requests, and we call open read async on that URI. We've wired up a callback method. The call is asynchronous to that service. So when we get our response back, it's going to uh, it's gonna get returned to this method onwinds returned. Here's onwinds returned. In e.result is our response stream. That's the results that we're getting back. I'm using this data contract JSON serializer to deserialize my response into a collection of wines. Once I get that collection back, I'm just binding that list box to the response. I've also done a little added extra work here where whenever you choose or uh, select a different item in that list box, I'm going to pop up another control giving you some additional detail. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set uh, uh, my index.php as my start page and let's run this sample up and let's see how we've kind of integrated uh, PHP and Silverlight at a much higher level. I'm going to choose to return page one, uh, which returns six wines. And when I click on it, you can see I get uh, some additional detail that pops up. You can also see that maybe I only want to return uh, three wines and I'll return page, uh, page two. And so you can see that we've got those three wines back and everything worked out quite well. So in this screencast, I kind of took it a step further. We built a service in PHP and we consumed that service from our Silverlight component really showing a tight integration between PHP and Silverlight. I really appreciate uh, your time, and thank you for watching this uh, screencast.